they all play on the um Concord stage next year. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're already done. Oh, wait, they're back? Speaking of I'm sure they're done in the d- gospel times of Wanjiru. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on, hold on. Speaking of, speaking of Concord, we gotta, let's see. That was a good one. Hi, and welcome to the show. Again, we thank God that you can watch the show, whether it's in your uh, living room, your bedroom, your kitchen, any other uh, area in your home. We're excited to bring you that minute's present. I'm your host, the Reverend Willie Williams, Jr. Excited about what you're going to hear today and then uh, excited about the people that you're going to see. I uh, want to say to you that we're always emphasize going down to the lower night ward and, and see the devastation, but realize the restoration. That area is coming up. Um, I think I try to get down at least once a, uh, uh, once a week. And if I'm not fortunate, I, uh, I hear about some of the progress that's taking place. I also say, yes, um, there, there are bad streets in the city, and there are some of the bad streets in the Lower Night Ward as well. But uh, make sure when you get visitors to come down, tell them about that area, go down there, see the area, and encourage people. Yes, there are blighted properties, there, there are overgrown lots, but there are people that are progressive and they want to see that area come back 100%. Again, also, we, we have a stranger. <laughs> <laughs> I knew he was going to go there. A stranger. He gonna go there. He's my co-host, the, the, the Reverend Dow Smith, also known as D.K. Smith, 940 AM on your radio dial. Uh, I don't know what you say I don't now. say that no I don't more. know what you say now. <laughs> well, I'm on from... 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. and I guess I could still say I still take you home in style with a smile. Do, do you say that? Man? No. Oh, I say I say because it's Hallelujah 9:40 a.m. and I let everyone know I got the Hallelujah hookup. Yeah, but I hear the only thing I hear you say peace. That's at the end. That's at the end. At least you catch the end. But first of all, speaking of end, I want to say the beginning. I want to thank you again for having me. I know I've been away since. Ooh, I don't know. First time this year, something like that? I think this is the first time yeah, this year. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. I say, hey. Spr- the- Spring brings a whole lot of things in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So do want to thank y'all for, um, thank you for holding mm-hmm. the fort down. If not, what would you do? Uh, it wouldn't be no show, huh? Play a lot of reruns. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I do want, I have a couple of announcements. I get back into that. Yeah, then, then and, you want um, to announce the guests. We have, have a lovely guest. Yes, we talk about certain things. I let you know also, and this affects you. Yes, it does. The Union Baptist College and Theological Seminary, uh, 626 Galvis, South Galvis, um, Dr. Robert, Reverend Dr. Robert Turner, Senior President, Reverend Dr. Kenneth McDowell, Academic Dean, or they'll be having their... 80th. Yeah, I was going to say 2018 uh, Baccalaureate and Commencement uh, Services. It's the 80th Annual Baccalaureate, and that's going to be Tuesday, May the 15th, 7 p.m., and the, the commencement service will be Wednesday, May 16th, 7 p.m., and it will be held at the St. Mark Fourth Baptist Church, that's at 2130 Perdido Street. Reverend Dr. Robert Turner is the host pastor. Now, I'm going to just say right fast. For additional information, you can contact Ms. Helen Johnson. She's a register. The number is 504-525-0580. 525-0580. And, of course, we say congratulations to those who are graduating and with the commencement exercise for the Union Baptist College and Theological Seminary. Well, you didn't mention some of the speakers, man. Well, if I had time, I would. Okay. <laughs> okay, for the baccalaureate, uh, it would be Tuesday, 7 p.m., Reverend Dr. Oren D. Grant, Sr., pastor at the St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church of Gretna, will be, will be the speaker. He's the president of the Westside Missionary Baptist Association. And the commencement uh, speaker will be Reverend Edward Alexander, Jr., pastor of the Christian Baptist Church of Lake Charles, Louisiana. And, of course, we do thank God for those um, speakers. And... For the Union Baptist College of Theological Seminary, I do have another announcement to do on the other side for First Pilgrim Baptist Church. But our, 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 I want to say right the first time, she's not a guest. She's almost like a 
co-host herself. You better watch it. Now. <laughs> Sandra Metz, because she's on the lot. Yeah, right? yeah. Sandra yeah. Metz. So we meant, we make mention of um, <laughs> Women's Day for First Pilgrims. But speaking of women. Mm -hmm. Oh, I speak of a woman. We have a lovely woman here, but I want to give her respect by giving her the degree that she has, Dr. Phyllis Key, and mm -hmm. we had her on the show before uh, talking about the suitcases and things like that. It was dealing with art. She's a, she's a teacher, but let me introduce her right now and say hello and welcome back, Dr. Key. Good to be back on the show and yeah. see both of you again. Now, give us your title and, and everything, what you are. I just last year received my Ph.D. Um, in education, so I specialized in education policy and also arts education, because oh. as you both know, I'm an art teacher mm -hmm. um, and very committed to bringing more art to the children, and so I got my doctorate to get some research done around art making and childhood development um, and had some really interesting, did some really interesting work, and now I'm back I guess you'd say in the field, working working with teachers again. So, so, so basically, do you do you? Um, I don't want to say discover uh, young artists, or do you do you highlight some? You know, at at, at a young age, highlight their potential. How, how do you do that? Absolutely. I should back up and give you my background a little bit. Yeah. Um, so I started my career teaching as an, as a teacher, um, and I taught at Chester Elementary in the Calliope Projects. As you know, after Katrina, yeah, wiped, away. wiped it away, mm -hmm. which was very devastating for, for the whole community. Um, and worked a little bit with the schools when children were starting to come back from Katrina, um, doing some art therapy, things like that in the schools with the children, because a lot of the times they needed that outlet to talk about what they had been through. Um, and then I, I continued teaching, and I've, I've basically been in arts education my whole career, so I've taught in addition to here, Louisiana, I taught in North Carolina, hmm. and I've also taught internationally in Dubai with Arab-speaking children. <laughs> well, okay, you speak you, Arab? I didn't say that on my last, on my last appearance here, you, yes. You, a little bit. I, I was an English-speaking teacher, so they had an Arabic-speaking teacher and an okay. English-speaking that, teacher, so they were experience. learning both languages uh, at the same time. I'm not worried about that. Dubai. Yeah. Dubai, uh, yeah. Well, that's yeah. one of my... What do you call that bucket list? Yeah, I like to like. To really? Well, like you want to go to Dubai? Yeah. It's worth the trip. It's Sydney? beautiful. Sydney? It's you beautiful, enjoy it? beautiful beaches. Yeah. How, yeah. how long did you stay there? Two and a half years. Whoa. Yes. <laughs> so you too. So so you okay. can talk. I lived there. The I was a local. Yeah. 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 Wow, mm -hmm. wow. yeah. And it was great to get kind of an international experience working in education in a different country and looking at how differently people prioritize education. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I found over there was that as a teacher, there was almost a little bit more respect. Um, the, highly the, regarded the teacher? Yeah, highly regarded a little bit more, you know? Oh, you know? And man, here it's like teachers are struggling sometimes. Yeah, but yeah, there yeah. It was, no, no, that's a good point you make. Yeah. Because, you know what? Well, locally, locally. No, when no, I said no, well, that's what it's locally. Comparison, but, but, comparing what's, what's locally been happening Dubai, here yeah, in, yeah. in the, in the uh, United States. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. yeah, what's been happening and stuff. Like, it, like I say, locally, locally, um, Teachers all these parish, said. Jefferson mm -hmm. Parish, and, yeah. you know, uh, not just, I don't think, not just the, uh, the pay, not just the, not just the salary, but I think that the key thing is, do they value what the teachers do? Mm -hmm. And look, my hats goes off to to all of my old teachers that had to put up with me, but they they did something that put in me that that you know, I never imagined that I w wanted to be a teacher, mm -hmm. and I teach at uh, Union Baptist College and Theological Seminary, oh, and I enjoy doing it because of what they put in me, mm -hmm. the the value of of of, of learning, mm -hmm. the experience. Of, of discovering more and more information. So yes, uh, again, we applaud you for for, for uh, dedicating your life uh, to teaching. One of my my professors said, he said, "This is what I like to do." I mean, you know, I, I know there there are other um, uh, careers that you probably can make a whole lot of money, but I enjoy doing this. Mm -hmm. So you enjoy what you're doing. I love it. I love what I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So once I finish my PhD, I've come back to working with teachers, but now I'm the director of an organization called the New. Orleans Arts Education Alliance. And we're basically a group of like-minded people and organizations who are passionate about making sure every child in the city has access to the arts. What we've seen in our data is that after Katrina, some of the arts were not coming back to the schools as quickly as they were there before. Um, and so a lot of the times children are not necessarily getting those arts experiences that they need to get in the schools. Um, and teachers and principals are very much 
stressed out. They work hard. I've been there. I know how hard they work <laughs> <laughs> and how hard it is sometimes to find resources. So what I'm doing with our organization is trying to make it easier for them to find resources. So like one of the things we did with Prospect, the big art show in town, they wanted to reach out to teachers. So we helped them by reaching out to teachers, bringing teachers together to meet with them. And they got to see all the resources they had. Um, they got to learn about field trips to take their children to look at the art and projects they could do around the art. And so that's what I do now. I, 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 I knew as a teacher how hard it was to find resources to bring the arts to my children. So I'm working now with teachers to make sure they know where everything is. Now, you know? is there, there a contact number that, that you know, some of, some of the struggling uh, teachers <laughs> that, that, that teach in probably public schools as well as the charter schools can contact you so they, they may be interested? Because look, I cannot tell you, um, art is, is something that expresses the innermost thoughts of the yes. individuals, mm -hmm. and, and, yes. and, and it's necessary. I don't care what anybody say. Yes. I mean, you look, I can draw the stick men and stuff like that, right. but I, I, I really have a, a, a definite affection for people that can do self-portraits or portraits, of, and they can do it just like, how you do that? Give me a camera. I can do it. <laughs> how you do that? And, and, and their confidence in, in, in doing it is that, Man, that's awesome. It's like, God, you you got an eye for, you know, you become that 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 that, that photographic individual that just clicking and, and drawing it. So I, I'm amazed with I got I got a nephew, he's uh he, he's an artist. I got a uh, dealer, uh, right? He, 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 yeah, <laughs> dealer. And we got got a good friend of yours, uh, who, who came on years ago, uh, uh James McClue, who, who who's an artist. We're gonna talk uh, well I don't know if he's doing art now, but he left to go to California. To he's do still doing art. art. He's okay. doing business. He's involved in other things now. I think a restaurant I'm business a, we talked about. I'm going to find out from his dad. Yeah, we'll yeah. Talk to his dad <laughs> but about he's that. still he's I know still his doing dad art. is proud of him that he's doing something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, I did give the director your contact information and everything. Yes, so I, so um, I, I guess I can say it now, too. Right, 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 if right. any. And we, we're happy to work with teachers. We'd love to hear from teachers because next year we're going to be putting on a series of resource workshops where teachers can come and find all the arts resources in New Orleans. So we're having museums and organizations that have resources for teachers to all come and share those with the teachers. So please contact us and get on our mailing list so That's we can right invite there. you. Celeste. That's me right there. Yes, yeah, Celeste at artsatall.org. I got to ask you, is that is it going to be a cost? If is it going to be a cost, you probably have to tell us a little bit later after the show and stuff like that, and do a referral. Uh, but but for the teachers, uh, I think the great thing they can do is bringing their, their uh, students to art exhibits, and, mm -hmm. and, and and they can start naming some some uh, famous artists, you know, Rembrandt and, and you know, uh, Picasso. <laughs> and yeah, and also like learn that. about the cultural arts in this community right. because right. New Orleans has say, one yeah. of the most arts-rich oh, communities really? in the world. So yeah, that's true too. Yeah. Just take a look at the buildings. <laughs> you know, abandoned <laughs> buildings. No, no, seriously, because what do you mean abandoned? Well, some, uh, the architecture. Some, some would call them graffiti, but others would call it art. Oh, okay, when they do the graffiti on the no, buildings, they, or what? mostly it's art now. You know, and people would really. I mean, if you go are out, you talking it, about murals or what? And you can say murals, but still, no. I mean, I was going down Rampart the other day, and I know there's a building that's going up, and it's got nothing but jazz musicians on the side of the building. It's just like I was coming, coming from Shelmet, and I saw this building, and, and the guy was out there, the artist, and he was spray painting, but then painting regularly and everything like that. And he did a good job. I was right there, Rampart, right before he hit Porridge's and everything. And it's on the side of a building, and it was just, that's art. Mm -hmm. That's art. art. We're surrounded by art everywhere mm -hmm. we go. And when we talk about art, we don't just talk about visual arts. We talk about music, mm -hmm. dance, theater, media arts like graphic design, film studies, things like that. These are all art forms and areas where children need that exposure early on, mm -hmm. you know, to grow. So. Hold that thought, Celeste. We're going to go to a break and we'll come back. We'll talk more about, um, well, uh, expanding your horizon in art. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Poor nutrition today will increase Sarah's chances of anemia, add to her health care costs, sick days, even stunt her ability to learn. And the thing is, Sarah's not even born yet. Get proper nutrition before it's too late. Call or visit WIC. WIC provides nutrition information, health care referrals, even food. Your child has you, and you have WIC. Mrs. J. 
Johnson, good to see you again. Uh, this is Mike. You can trust him. He looks just like you. Plus, two against one is more intimidating when we force someone to sign a loan. And I'll be sucking up to you in order to keep up the illusion. So, here are your low monthly.